Right, okay, here I am. Uh, it's been a while. I'm back now. Um, gonna go over some anatomy of the skull here. Uh, another hard area of um, of uh, uh, anatomy. Or <clears throat> so I'm gonna start with the sutures because they're what divide the bones. Um, okay, first sutures we're looking for the coronal suture. The coronal suture, we're looking at the top of the cranium here, is this suture here. This is the coronal suture. Then we have the, um, the longitudinal suture, which is this here. And then we have the lamboidal suture, which is this here. Okay, not sure if you saw that, so I'll go over it again. Coronal suture longitudinal suture and the lamboidal suture. So there we go. Right. Next we're going to go over some of the um, structures um, made by this um, suture. Actually the junctions of this su these sutures have names. So here you can see we have two sutures joining together. We have the longitudinal and the coronal suture joining together at this point. This point is known as the bregma. Okay, so we have three bones here, two sutures joining at the bregma. At the back, we have a similar setup. We have three bones, two sutures joining together at this point. We have the lamboidal suture and the posterior part of the longitudinal suture joining together at this point. This point is known as the lambda. Okay, L A M B D A, lambda. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, I hope so. And finally, we have a point here which you can't see so well on this skull. It is um, plastic, but it's known as the pterion. Um, as here we have more than three bones together. We in fact have four bones joined together at this point, known as the pterion. Pterion spelt P T. E R I O N, Terion. So there are sutures, and they're the names for the points where the sutures meet, which logically would be the weakest points of the skull, the points where injuries um, would be most common in things like um, RTAs or RTCs, whatever you call them, um, traffic accidents. Um, so now going over the bones, now that we know the divisions, we can look at the bones. So firstly, we have the frontal bone which is this bone here, the frontal bone at the front of the head. We then have the parietal bone. The parietal bone is this whole bone here. This is the parietal bone. And you have two parietal bones. We then have the temporal bone. This is the squamosal suture I didn't mention earlier. Squamosal, it's almost square shaped. This is the temporal bone. Then we have the sphenoid bone, which is actually here. The point you usually think of as being your temple is actually really where your, your, sphenoid, your sphenoid bone or your sphenoid bone, I should say, is. So you have your sphenoid, temporal bone, parietal bone, frontal bone. And then if we go all the way around the back, we find the occipital bone. Okay, so the occipital bone borders with the parietal bones. On both sides, you have two parietal bones, one occipital. It also borders with the temporal bone. The temporal bone borders with the frontal and the parietal bones, as well as the occipital bones, and as well as the sphenoid bone. And the frontal bone, at the front of the skull, borders with the parietal bones and the <coughs> temporal bones and the sphenoid bone. And it also, the frontal bone also borders with our next two bones that we're going to go over, which is the zygomatic bone here, and the maxillary bone, which forms this part of the skull. We also have the nasal bones, there are two of them here and here. We have the lacrimal bones just behind those on the medial sides of the orbits. And then finally, we have the mandible. 
So these are all the major bones of the skull. Other bones would be the vomer. Um, let me think. Other bones. That's that's all that's worth going over at the moment until we go inside the skull. This area here is known as the zygomatic arch, and deep to the zygomatic arch we have a fossa. This actually we can note we call them two fossas. We call this one the supratemporal fossa, and we call this one the infratemporal fossa. Basically, the most important thing about the um, these fossa is the most important one is the superior or the supratemporal fossa because the temporalis muscle sits here. Big muscle spreads, fans out, kind of attaches around this area and inserts on the mandible, assisting with mastication, chewing. The zygomatic arch, as it's known, is made up of, of course, the zygomatic bone and quite a significant part, a process of the temporal bone and plus these protuberances from the frontal and the maxillary bone. So that's the zygomatic arch. You sometimes hear um, surgeons talking about the zygomatic arch. I don't know if, you, if you're a medical student or if you, you watch uh, Gawi programs for fun. Um, so there we go. They're the outside bones of the skull. I've got three minutes left. I don't know if it's worth mentioning. I'll mention some of the um, the processes and stuff um, on these bones, um, some of the features of these bones. So anyway, let's look in the front of the skull here is known as the piriform aperture. Piriform means pear-shaped, as you can see it's pear-shaped. Then we have these um, concha here. This is the middle concha and the inferior concha. The function of these bones is to create these protuberances inside the nose. So when we inhale through our nose it creates turbulence in the air thus moistening, humidifying and filtering the air that we inhale. Um, these are known as the alveolar processes. Alveoli in the lungs are sac-like structures. These kind of sac-like, you, you see the shape there. So these are the alveolar processes. We then have the teeth. We have the medial or, or central incisors. We have the lateral incisor the canine, first premolar, second premolar, first molar, second molar, and then some people have a third molar. So there are teeth right there. Gone over the teeth. Right, two minutes to go. Um, we then have the inferior here and superior, you can't really see on this skull, um, orbital fissures. This would be where the nasolacrimal duct goes and drains into the nose, right here. Hope you can see that. This would be the mental foramen, you have two. Um, this would be the external acoustic maiatus, where the canal for the ear um, is. This is the mastoid process, where the sternocleidomastoid attaches. Styloid process, another attachment site for muscles, and these two processes we have on the mandible. Now, this is the condyle of the mandible. This is known as the coronoid process, not to be confused with the coronoid process in the elbow. There's a process in the elbow joint called the coronoid process. It has the same name. Don't confuse them. They have the same name, but this is the coronoid process of the mandibular bone. And then if we go around to the back, we have the external um, occipital protuberance and attachment site for, um, I think, the nuchal ligament. I'm not sure about that. But then we have the superior nuchal line, inferior nuchal line, other attachment sites for these muscles. Um, anyway, I have 40 seconds left. I don't want to risk it. So um, that's a wrap. We're going to go through. Um, we're going to go through together some of the internal features and the features of the inferior skull, which I haven't particularly mentioned much this time around. Right. Hope that was helpful. Please comment. Thanks.